We have received our building consent. We can now start building our home. Everyone always says that building a house is more expensive than you expect, and they're right. We haven't even started building, and I've already spent over $15,000. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the costs breakdown of everything and what other stages we've gone through to reach this point. Our very first step on the land was to get our septic tank design. That is to get the placement and how far it is from any waterways and what type of soil we have. We had heard that if you submit to the council your building plans and your septic tank request and a fireplace request all at once, then it, it does cost a little less. So that's what we decided to do. So these plans go to the council and also Horizons Water which is another company that we need to submit in this area. That's not the same for all of New Zealand, just for us. And this cost us just over $850. And I feel like we got these plans ages, ages ago. But first stage, our next stage was to flatten the house site and extend the driveway. This was actually the third time the earthworks movers had come to our land. And that cost us about $700. And then we could get the geotech report done. That was an engineer to come out to the land and drill down to test how deep would the piles for the house need to go before it hit solid ground. This was an expensive part because, partly because, you know, engineers are involved. They're not exactly cheap. Plus we don't have a company in the area they had to drive out from Taupo so you've got the travel costs too so that's one of the downsides of living out in this area uh, a lot of companies just don't have businesses here so they have to come in from quite far away because this is a volcanic area and there's lots of pumice from past eruptions we had heard horror stories of the piles needing to be extremely long as it hits uh, patches of ash but we were okay it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad but I'm not going to relax until the piles are in <laughs> so they cost just over two thousand dollars for that engineers are not cheap and then the next stage was to go to a draftsman with our plans so I'd been quite detailed with what we wanted to do, which I think was quite helpful. There was a guy in the area who I'd found online and he seemed quite good. He was very busy, so it was quite a few months before he could fit us in. He'd warned us to that the costs start stacking up the more changes you do. So I, try, I tried my hardest not to do any changes. Some of the changes we did get in the end where was the iron used on the sides and on the roof we've got a mix of ply and corrugated corrugated is a lot cheaper and turns out I had initially wanted one that's called quad it looks quite nice but it's also ended up being more expensive because you needed more ply sitting behind it for airflow whereas if we used corrugated that already had airflow because of the shape of the, the iron. So we went for that option. And then I really wanted quad for the roofing, but again, it was gonna cost a lot of extra with wood underneath to hold it up and all that. So we've ended up going for um, try, try something or other, trapezoid. We also realized when we marked out the house that the stairs to the entrances were actually going to get in the way of the driveway because there is a bit more height than I realized. So we ended up having to shift the angle of the stairs. Not a biggie, not a biggie. And we had a bit of discussion about the materials used in the kitchen and the bathroom. I didn't realize it had to be that detailed in the plans. <laughs> Turns out they don't like wooden floors in the wet areas. It has to be either vinyl or tiles. And yeah, you had to be down to exactly what type of shower you're going to use. 
I think the council have been hit in the past with leaky homes, so they're being super careful about any areas that water can get in. We had to push quite a bit to get the use of a wooden kitchen bench top, but we got there. <laughs> We've also been given the advice to avoid jib at all costs, which is good because Hayden hates jib. <laughs> That's the stuff you put on the walls to plaster over. There's just a huge shortage in New Zealand right now, and that it's causing a lot of house builds to pause because they can't go to the next stage. And I actually found this whole experience with the draftsman took longer than I expected. I had thought Hayden would start building in May, but we've only just got the building consent now. Uh, it's the 20th of June today, and we still need to put in the piles and get a council inspection before Hayden can finally start the build. And the cost for the draftsman was $7,000 in the end, the most on this first stage. And then next we ended up getting the Earthworks guys out again just to lower the back the highest point in the land because we found out that the pile sticking out of the earth had to be less than 1.2 meters otherwise you had to start going into bracketing of the house which then upped the cost so it ended up being easier just to lower the land just a little bit and then because the house build had kind of <laughs> expanded with time we also cleared a little bit more of the grass away and that only cost us $166, so that, was, that wasn't too bad. The next step for us was to put in a submission to a, co a company called Horizons Water that deals with the water in the area for discharging to land for the septic tank. I know this doesn't exist everywhere in New Zealand, it's all slightly different. This cost us uh, $885. <laughs> Uh, and I should have done it earlier because the council wants proof that you've done the submission. It doesn't need to be finished, it just needs proof that it's started. Our application with Horizon Water has now been paused. This is an interesting stage where we need the iwi or the Maori organisation in the area to come out and have a look at where the septic tank will go and sign off that we won't be contaminating the land and it won't be ending up in the Whanganui River. This is a stage that can take a while. I know of one family where it took them six months and then I've heard of another house down the road where it took them nine months. So we just need to wait until that happens before we can install the septic tank. How long will it take us? And then the next stage was submit to the council and pay the fee which was, again, more than I expected. It was just under $4,000. I think it was that expensive because we were combining the septic tank and the house build and the fireplace, I think. So, uh, we paid the draftsman a little bit extra to submit it for us, and it's all online. And having a look, I'm so glad we did because it was very confusing, and I think it sped up the process because his name was on it, he's known to the council, and when the council came back requiring a little more information on the wind zone in the area, Alex was able to quickly fling it back up in a day and soon after we got uh, the building consent. So the process, they say it takes 20 working days. If they come with you requiring extra information, they pause the application and then it starts up again once you've submitted the required information. So we actually got it in less than 20 days, so that was, that was a very exciting day really. So that's the breakdown of all the costs so far, so we can now start the house build. So the next stage is for the piles driver to come in and put in the piles for the house. We've had to contact our geotech company again to get a little bit of information for him, and I've talked to our council inspector and he's happy to come after the piles have been driven because the piles driver is known in the area. He's unfortunately very busy for the next couple of weeks so we have to be patient and just wait a little bit longer <laughs> and then hopefully Hayden can start his part. And this is called a self-build, it had to be mentioned in the application to the council as well 
and Hayden is going to do as much as he can do legally. I think it's the we still need a plumber and an electrician as well. Oh, I'm so excited. I just I was just so keen to get started. Even though we'll be a couple of months late, later than I'd hoped. And an interesting side note, I can see why some people avoid going through the council because it costs a lot and it's required a lot of steps to reach this point. $15,000, we could have easily built a slightly smaller cabin like this and it could have been the bedrooms and you know we could have then had a living space and a bedroom space and that would be it, done. <laughs> But I guess the advantage with building the house through the council is that the value of the land will go up, so we're not losing money. That's why I tell myself, right? <laughs> Trying to do it the correct way. So that's where we're up to. How did you find that? Was it more expensive than you expected? Have you built a house? How did you find the process? Or are you in another country? What is the stage is like for you.